Tower of the Daleks is now on a Blu-ray, so what better time than for me to review this DVD I got six months ago. I know I'm late, I'm very, very late, but you know what, I've been busy. Let's get out of here. Power of the Daleks is without doubt the single most important story in the history of Doctor Who. This had to do one important job. This had to convince a generation of kids that had grown up with William Hartnell that a new man could take over the role. Now companions changing was nothing new, but this was the first time the lead character had ever changed. Just imagine what a gamble that was. The easier solution to be would have been to get someone who looks somewhat like William Hartnell and to never have mentioned the change. Now obviously it succeeded, because if it hadn't I wouldn't be standing here talking to you now. But why is it animated? Why haven't we got the full story? Well, most of you will probably know that in the 1960s videotape was very, very expensive and there was no home distribution method. We were about 20 years off from VHS, about 30 or 40 years away from DVD. So these things were never going to be seen again, so the BBC took the ultimate decision to just wipe their archives clean. They got rid of Dad's Army episodes, early Beatles performances, and a lot of Patrick Troughton's back catalogue, which is a shame because Patrick Troughton is just brilliant in the role. So we get this in animated form. So the only thing that really survived on this was a couple of little clips that were included on this DVD, and the audio, which is why we get this animated feature. And let me tell you, the drawings are beautiful. Slightly caricature-ish, but something about Patrick Trump's face just works so well on animation. The Daleks are awesome in this. Probably the best we've ever seen them. They are sleek and smooth and they just work so well in black and white animation. Now the animation is a little bit cheap, but it kind of reminds me of the production values of something from the 1960s. This is how I imagine a 1960s cartoon would look. As it appears in audio, it appears in the animation. So we do get moments where people are just standing there blinking like this. And it just looks really awkward, and it's also really unintentionally funny. I just wish they'd trim that little bit. Like, when there's nothing happening, I just wish they'd trim that little bit. Now, I haven't watched the Blu-ray yet. I'm hoping to get that next, because that's got the colorized version. But, I don't know, I'm kind of in the camp that it should be black and white. But then if you're that much of a purist, you shouldn't be buying it on DVD because you were never meant to have it on DVD. I wouldn't recommend binge watching this story like we do with Modern Who. I would take this one or two episodes at a time, maybe even watch it the way it was intended and watch one a week. But this is a great introduction to the second story and I really hope we get more of these. There is something about Patrick Trout's face that just works so well animated. There's a great documentary about the making of the DVD, about the making of the original Power of the Daleks. There's some trailers, and it's interesting to see the way trailers have progressed from the 60s to the modern era. Now, I would give this a solid 8 out of 10. Now, this is a great introduction to the second Doctor. If you haven't picked up the DVD yet, I highly recommend it. Now, continuity fans will realise that I'm not wearing the same shirt I was in the intro, and that's because my original footage got lost, and I'm not nearly talented enough to animate it. So if this is your first video, please hit the thumbs up, please subscribe, and if you want to check out more Doctor Who related videos, I've got one down here about my thoughts about Bill Potts being gay. And yes, I did unintentionally cosplay as Rose from the end of time.